What's up, y'all? You gotta watch these videos for context. Boy, hope y'all have a great day. Take care. All right, guys, I'm back again. Uh, I've had people asking me to show the actual airspeed traveling uh, based off of Steve Morris's video. If you go back and watch my video on the stopwatch, I sh clearly show you at 7,000 RPMs how fast the valve opens. And then I went even more accurate with actual how fast it, how long it opens with the degrees of the camshaft and of course you're always talking about the total advertised degrees of duration now the comment was made that the airflow is only moving like this far can you see my hand yes okay so I'm going to show you why that's not true now we know that air speeds in a cylinder head a top head they're well over 300 feet per second and we've clocked speeds at over 700 feet per second in a racing engine at 8,000 RPMs plus in the upper plenum area so trust me you gotta imagine 300 feet in one second guys how far is that that's a hundred yards okay now what's what's the math here it is again you, to get the whole context <coughs> go to my video with the big stopwatch on it but let's just say this is a slow cylinder head the speed, slow cylinder head, 300 feet per second. The time, again, this was figured at 7,000 RPMs because I think Steve Morris asked how fast does the valve move at 7,000 RPMs. And I figured it two ways. I figured it total on off, open, closed at 360 degrees of duration. And I figured it at 300 degrees of duration. We're going to use the actual cam formula of 300 degrees of duration, okay? And that came out to 0 0.00714 milliseconds, okay? You know what you do now? You simply multiply the two, 300 times 0 0.00714 equals... 2.142 feet. That means that that airflow in that amount of time travels 2 feet. Guys, it's actually hard to believe. I know. It's hard to believe. That's what I said in my second video. That's the one with the picture of the little intake port and the air flowing through it. And I said, your airflow assumptions probably are wrong. This is what it is on paper. This is what it should do. Now we deal with a dynamically running engine. And what does it, does it actually do, right? At 7,000 RPMs, that air should move two feet in that port on an intake stroke. Does it move two feet? Honestly, I don't know. And that's why I said the only way to know is to measure it. Yes, we can figure it on paper, but it's not dynamic on paper. Remember, if you have a large port, you could have poor velocity, which 300 feet per second is not that great. You could have a large port with low velocity, so that means the piston is coming up as the intake valve is starting to open, and you can shove airflow up the intake. That's called reversion. Well before it starts to actually pull fuel and air in, then you have the exhaust side that can cause reversion again so you have this kind of thing going on inside the intake right but at the same time we know that that exhaust pipe is blowing some air that means in order to blow air it's got to be pulling it in okay is it moving more than that far oh i guarantee it is guarantee it is and anytime you make a blanket statement that a large port that flows a lot is better than a small port that flows a lot, don't, that is for your application. If you put a large port on a circle track motor, you're going to get waxed. Trust me. 
So again, everything has its place and everything has its application. You certainly wouldn't want to put a small port on a big blower motor or a big nitrous motor. Everything has its place in life. Engines are living things when you turn that key right down to the type of fuel and how cold or hot, all of it. The efficiency, the valve job, the shape, all of it matters. That's why you can't go by what it says on paper because once I turn that key, that paper is out the window. The passion, right guys, the passion. That's what it's about. Okay, I'm crazy. I'm gonna go sit down now. Have a good day.